This is Lisa from Mobile Tech View, and it is Smackdown time yet again. Two capable phablets here, big phones. We have the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, one of the best phones Samsung's ever put out. And here we have the Nexus 6, Google's own pure Android experience, gone up to 5.96 inches. Let's call that six inches, 5.7 inches. Both Super AMOLED, both Snapdragon 805 quad core, latest, greatest. We're going to compare them now. So here we have our two fabulous phablets, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, loved by many. And by the way, for those of you who like this and want that little wraparound edge display, there's also the Samsung Galaxy Note Edge for $100 more, but limited availability. So we're going to go with the Note 4 mainstream, available everywhere. Expensive, but not quite as expensive as the Note Edge for our Smackdown here. So Samsung pretty much defined the whole phablet experience, the supersized phone that's becoming somehow very mainstream now after a couple of years of notes coming out which is pretty awesome, 5.7 inch AMOLED display and Samsung brands it as Super AMOLED, 2560 by 1440 resolution. Same resolution as the Nexus 6 made by Motorola here, only stretched a little bit bigger, 5.96 inches, call it six inches, and it's just hard, hardly a hair less than six inches, versus 5.7 inches, also AMOLED display, both beautiful, both gorgeous. Both very large phones. So uh, obviously this is this is the interesting thing here. If you're looking at these phones, you're into big phones. I think a lot of people who are have been previous Note users. Note 1, Note 2, Note 3, yep, yeah, you know, we have the Note 4. So you're probably very used to the Samsung experience and all the features that Samsung throws in. So when the Nexus 6 came out, a lot of people said, wow, really top to respects, but wow, it's this it's missing stuff because you're so used to the Samsung experience. And we're gonna talk about that in detail, the two different philosophies behind these phones. But first, while we're talking about size, people have said, oh, I looked at the Nexus 6 and it was a monster. They're not that different in size. Let's put them one right on top of the other so you can see, especially given that there's almost a quarter of an inch difference in display size. Face it, they're both big. Now, where you do notice the size difference though is the Note 4 is just a little bit narrower, so that can make it easier to hold. It's also quite thin. It's about the same thickness all the way through. Samsung's phones usually are. They don't do anything with curves or bevels or anything like that. So when you put it in your pocket, it's not taking as much space. So the Nexus 6 has the same design as like the Moto X does, all, all recent Moto phones, and it's a very attractive design. Pretty thin on the edge, but it has that curve. So it is a thicker phone when you talk about this center section right here, but the curve can also make it feel comfortable. Some people don't like the straight sides on the Galaxy Note 4. I actually kind of do because they give you a very positive grip. Well, this one has fairly straight but thin sides, so they're not going to dig in for those who hate it, but it feels good in the hand because it fits the curvier palm but it also is thicker and therefore a bit more of a handful. Now, when we talk about materials, Samsung has not been a class leader there. They've been made very plastic phones. That's changed a bit with the Note 4, but let's look at the Nexus 6 first. Again, just like the Moto X 2014 edition here, you've got metal on the sides. It's available in your choice of blue, which obviously this one is, or a white, and it's kind of like an off-white thing. Anyway, the metal around the edges is pretty ample. It's not just a little bit fairly thick. It gives it a quality feel. This this shaped back here, I like many folks, I like the, the Moto X 2014 edition a lot, and this is just a bigger version of it. I think it's a pretty classy design. When you look at it, it doesn't say cheap. It says complex, interesting curves, curved over here, curved everywhere. Nice looking. Cheap's not the first thing that comes to mind. Now with our Note 4, definitely the best looking Note yet. No more faux chrome around the sides. Interesting thing is we have metal here, and obviously you can see the exposed metal with the chamfer, which is very nice and very classy. But Samsung decided to put a paint finish on top to match the color of the phone. It's available in your choice of black or white in the US, which is where we are. So it kind of hides some of the metal a little bit, but some folks really love this. Other say, yeah, that's nice, okay, whatever. I like this design a lot in the Galaxy Alpha in a smaller size. I think that looks pretty darn classy. That's a 4.7 inch phone. When you bring it up to 5.7 inches, it's nice. It still doesn't scream, I'm gonna beat up the HTC One M8 or the iPhone or any of the classier phones on the block, but it's pretty nice looking. We still have our removable faux leather plastic thin back over here, textured, I leave that up to you. Difference physically is that you get the home button here. Samsung loves that movable clicky home button and you have two capacitive buttons here. I have nothing against that. You don't use up any screen real estate though the on-screen buttons will auto hide on 
screen phones like the Nexus 6 that don't have physical buttons over here. But one thing I do find annoying using one handed is I tend to accidentally brush the capacitive buttons a lot and do things I didn't mean to do. That is up to you. Some folks prefer one over the other. Our Nexus 6 has on-screen buttons, otherwise known as the PlayStation buttons, because this is running Android 5.0 Lollipop, the latest, greatest version of the operating system. So uh, why Google went abstract with this, I don't know. But anyway, you still have back home, the multitasking button right there. It's up to you which you prefer. Like I said, these auto hide on full screen applications anyway, so you won't have to see them. Multitasking there, it's pretty quick. Now the note, this is where we get into the software differences. This is running Android 4.4 KitKat. And Samsung has typically not been really quick to update their devices. So for those of you who are operating system enthusiasts, well, you know, Nexus devices always are the first ones to get it. Samsung, not so much. And Samsung has a lot going on here with TouchWiz. It takes a lot of work for them to tailor their version of TouchWiz to every new major OS update that comes out. But here, there's often, now I've been hitting the multitasking button a lot, so that's getting a little bit better. Often there's just a little bit of lag here because guess what? Samsung's customizing the multi-app function here where you can bring up any of these applications because these all happen to be compatible as multi-window. You can either do split screen or you can do floating multitasking. So there's the interesting thing about this. Samsung does multitasking. They say you got a big screen phone, you're going to want to do some fancy multitasking. So you can have your two apps, either top and bottom, or the neat little floating window applications going on there. The Nexus is just a big phone. There is no nod to I'm almost the size of a tablet or anything like that going on. It's the same operating system you'll see on Nexus 5 running Lollipop or the Nexus 9, a tablet running Android. So those of you who want fa fancy multitasking, you're not going to get it here. What you're going to get with the Nexus 6 is very clean Android, the latest version of the operating system. Generally speaking, very quick, very responsive. This is for those of you who put your own launchers on here. You want to put your own custom ROMs, unlock bootloader here. Well, except for the AT&T version, maybe. It seems like they're messing with the Nexus. Shame on them. Anyway, generally sold, unlocked also, so you can use it with different providers. For example, this is a T-Mobile model. Works with the Verizon SIM, works with an AT&T SIM. Samsung locked bootloader. Samsung knocks on board. Obviously, unless you go and find the unlocked version, it's going to be carrier locked. You can go out and unlock it. Uh, there's a lot of ROM support in the community for those of you that do, don't mind tripping knocks and unlocking your bootloader if you can and doing all sorts of custom things, but really not the primary purpose of the Samsung. Besides the multi-window and touch with treatment, there's also a AV remote IR blaster there so you can control your TV on the Samsung. Sorry, not going to get that on the Nexus. It's core features only there. Also, this home button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Now, it doesn't work like the iPhone where you just lay your finger on here and it just locks, unlocks for you here. you got to swipe it. If you're careful and you're patient, you can get about 95% accuracy on that. You also have the health monitor on the Samsung on the back side and where the flash is. You can monitor your heart rate. You can check your blood oxygen level. You can even try to check the UV strength of the sun. None of that is on the Nexus. Now, those things for a lot of people, mm, yeah, not so important. But one thing that is important for some of you is the S Pen. For those of you who are into taking notes or drawing, because you happen to be artistically inclined, we have the S Pen, which is Wacom technology. So this is great for drawing on the screen, for hovering over stuff, sort of like you would mousing over menus, say, all of those uses here. If you have a Note and you love the S Pen, obviously you're going to gonna want to upgrade to the Note 4. It's pretty much a unique feature for the Note series there. If you do, say, own a Note 2, a Note 3, and you've never used your S Pen, only, or if you only used it because you told yourself you should be trying it once in, once in a while because it's there, well, then the Nexus 6 could work just fine for you. The same actually goes for the multitasking features. Some people really do make use of the split window view and the new floating window multitasking. It's not supported in every application, but many of the core applications support it. Some folks say, wow, that's really awesome. I really want to use it, and they never do use it. So if you're one of those people, again, the Nexus 6 could work perfectly well for you. If you are in love with the multitasking features here in the split window view, well, obviously you want to stick with the, the Note series. Or look at the LG G3. It has some of those sort of features too, minus the pen. 
Obviously, on both of these, viewing angles are quite good. They are both AMOLED displays with pentile matrix underneath. Doesn't matter so much because the PPI is so darn high on each of these, given the 2560 by 1440 resolution. Well, near infinite contrast, really deep inky blacks. And both of them have pretty good whites. Now, much has been made about the Nexus 6's display already, and you're probably noticing right now that it looks to be the slightly brighter one, even though we're not looking head on on this. And uh, this is where it gets complicated. And I know some of you might have played with them in stores and said, oh, I don't know if it was bright enough. Neither of these has auto brightness that I'm in love with. I think the Samsung is often too dark, but it, the auto brightness is required to get it to maximum brightness, which is kind of annoying because I like to turn it off indoors, but it's not bright enough. But then if you go outside and you want it to get really super bright to combat the sun, you need auto brightness on. Right now it is set to max brightness with auto brightness off and it's not wildly bright, is it? And our Nexus 6, the auto brightness just really cuts down on the brightness in all settings. Now, it's viewable outdoors with auto brightness on, sure. It doesn't really kick into a super duper high bright mode though with auto brightness on. But anyway, overall, if you go in the store and you see the phone where auto brightness is on by default, and I'll show you where that setting is right here. And it's now called adaptive brightness right there. Anyway, when when you turn it off, it's actually quite a bright phone. No more dull. Eh. The difference in color, you know, Samsung is really cool because they actually let you choose from a couple of different color modes there. You've got your cinematic ultra saturated, you've got your sRGB, which is the AMOLED photo setting. So you can choose from a couple of those. The Nexus, not so much. Now, maybe there'll be some third party hacks and tinkering kind of things. That's one of the things with the Nexus. You get a lot of that to change it. By default, most phones and even most laptops these days are actually too cool, but we've gotten used to that. That means whites that tend towards the blue instead of towards the yellow, warm tones. So the Nexus 6 actually is a bit more where the white balance should be, but some people think it looks, well, too warm because you're so used to the cool balance, even on the Note 4. Now, Samsung does a pretty nice job of balancing out their, their calibration, but they do still veer towards the cool. So does even Apple with the iPhone 6 Plus. Now, how about audio quality? We're not going to start with the obvious thing, which is the speakers. We're going to talk about audio output from the headphone jack. And obviously both of these have headphone jacks up here. Samsung has done a lot of work actually to customize their, their audio libraries and stuff like that to try to support some higher quality audio and stuff like that, like working with IK multimedia products, trying to get in on the iPhone business there. Anyway, Samsung wins when it comes to headphone output. Not to say that the Nexus 6 is terrible. It's not. It's got kind of a little high on the crosstalk, stuff like that. But I think for most average people listening to these, they're both going to sound quite nice. But for those of you who are more audiophiles, you're going to notice that the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 sounds a bit better out of the headphone jack. Now, things change completely when we talk about sound because our friend the Nexus has stereo front spa facing speakers here that are very loud and very full. And you can watch our review of this to hear them in action. Very, very impressive stuff here. Now Samsung goes with the, I have a giant phone here, but where's my speaker? I got this little speaker right on the back over here. It's not that impressive, you know, and, and I find myself cupping my hand over the speaker to try to reflect the audio back at me sometimes if I'm having trouble hearing it. It's not hideous, but it's certainly your average eh, smartphone audio experience. So it really, if you listen through the speakers a lot when you're watching video or whatever, the Nexus 6 is going to blow you away. This one's going to be like every other phone on the market sort of experience. It's reasonably loud, but it's not awesome. Cameras on paper, the Nexus 6 camera looks pretty good. It uses a Sony Exmor sensor. It's 13 megapixel. Uh, Motorola and Google neither have great prowess at putting out good camera software, but actually the Nexus 6 has done better than say the 2014 Moto X, which actually uses the same sensor. So it's, it's pretty good as long as you have decent lighting. We have a ring LED flash here that you think would make a great difference in low light shots. And no, not so much. And Samsung, we have a 16 megapixel camera. We've got our flash right there. Really superb photos. I think you've heard, probably heard this in enough reviews in our reviews. Very good camera. Good 4K video, by the way, out of each of these optical image stabilization, otherwise called OIS, on both of these. In, in good lighting outdoors, they are pretty darn close, but in average indoor lighting, the Samsung starts to pull ahead. Now, the Note 4 is still not a superb low light camera. It gets its large butt kicked by the iPhone 6 Plus, and even just the iPhone 6 in that department, but 
the the Nexus 6 is really not fantastic in low light either. It's not your bar club party kind of camera. And the approach to software is very different. Now, one thing about Lollipop is it's going to open up the, the camera applications that you see to improve things. So there's, again, hope for the Nexus 6 that some folks may develop some really nifty camera applications there. While I don't always love Samsung TouchWiz for all of the software that's thrown on it everywhere, I actually love their camera application because they have just what you need to start off, just the important things right there, switching your front and back camera, HDR on or off, more settings, obviously. You can go, go over to gallery here, photo, video, modes. This is where it gets interesting, and they have a very informative set of pictures here to tell you what each of these things do. Rear camera selfie, selective focus, that's your background, defocus, bokeh, blur, that sort of thing. Panorama, download some more. Auto mode, plenty of settings over here available. You want more settings? We got more settings. Lots of stuff, very intuitive icons and labeling right there. So I, I, this is a camera that anybody can make use of and even start playing with some of the advanced features. And here we have the Nexus 6, always bare bones UI right here. Wow, it's a shutter button, there we go. T tap that if you want to do things like turn on timer, see a grid, have HDR plus turned on, automatic flash control, switch your camera. There's not a lot going on. There's a couple more settings here. So very basic, very simple. Now, very, very basic, very simple works just fine for something like the iPhone 6 because it tends to use very good camera software to capture the best shot. Whenever you feel like your camera isn't the best, though, you can be kind of a little bit bummed when you're not getting more. If you have HDR Plus on, it takes a little bit longer to take a picture. If you turn it off, especially because we really don't need it in this lighting situation, much quicker there. So, if we swipe in from this side, you can see you can choose panorama, lens blur, video mode, get to some really basic settings over here. There's hardly anything to be seen over there, and you can get from swiping the other direction, you can get to your gallery. So the camera on the Note 4 is the better camera. I like the camera software as well. Not hideous, the Nexus 6. Finally, we can say that about a Motorola camera, but not as good as the Note 4. Big phones have big batteries because there's room for a big battery because they need it. Both of these, by the way, running on the quad-core Snapdragon 805 CPU, clock at 2.7 gigahertz, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage. Nexus is available with 64 gigs of storage, if you like, for $50 more, but it doesn't have a micro SD card slot. Oh, dear. So for those of you who like expandable storage, that would be the Note 4. So next point, the back on this, like I said, is removable. You have access to the battery. Both of these have 3220 milliamp batteries, which is pretty darn big battery for pretty big darn big phones. But here's what happens when you yank off the, the back right there. Battery. Now, micro SIM card slot, micro SD card slot. Now, on our Nexus, all sealed inside, you know, you can, you know, if you want to dismantle this, you can. It actually gets a pretty good repairability index rating from iFixit of 7. But still, nominally, everything is sealed inside here. Nano SIM card pop-out drawer right over here. Battery life should be about the same, right? Okay, this guy is almost a quarter inch bigger display. Maybe it's going to use a little bit more. Well, so far, the Note 4 is the real winner in battery life. Now, the Nexus 6, this is running brand new Android Lollipop 5.0 OS with supposed Project Volta that's supposed to improve battery life. Well, so we have a feeling that Google has some things to fine tune and maybe things could change, but so far, looking at other Moto phones, lovely as they've been, have come out this year. Awesome battery life is not part of the package. Decent battery life, okay, battery life, but not phenomenal. So our Note 4 typically runs about up to an hour more for screen on time, which is significant. That's actually use time there, folks. Again, six months from now, maybe this will be a different story, but right now, both of these will get you through the day on a charge because they are such large batteries. But if you want to go that day and a half to two days, if you're a moderate to light user, it can make a difference, certainly. And if you're a heavy user, well, yeah. And for those of you who like to carry around spare batteries and buy Samsung's external battery charger to keep those topped up, Simple as swapping in new batteries. Now, with either of these, you can also use external battery packs, which have become all the rage because so many phones have batteries that are sealed inside. That's a viable alternative for the Nexus. Both of these support Qualcomm 2.0 Quick Charge, and they come with quick chargers in the box. Motorola calls theirs the Turbo Charger, whatever. They're both quick charge devices. They both do charge very quickly, 30 to 50% in a half an hour at some times, which is pretty 
well, darn quick. Nexus also supports wireless charging, Qi wireless charging. Given the curved back, you know, that can be a little bit hard to get to make contact, and this is the sweet spot right there for the charging area, but has wireless charging. One thing about wireless charging, though, it's not as quick as using that turbo charger, but it is more convenient because you just drop it right on the charging plate and voila, it starts charging. So for those of you who are wondering how white the whites are, clearly we have a lot of white on both of these right now, and they both look pretty darn good there. Multitasking in evidence here, we have the floating little calculator window running on top of our gallery application. Here we just have full screen goodness, so again, that's up to you. Everybody picks on Samsung with their touch whiz lag, and I do have to say that there is a bit of it on the Note 4. Now, if you just use Samsung products, you're probably never going to notice it, but if you if you try out something like the Nexus 6 or another one of the quicker, cleaner Android phones, you will notice the difference. So those of you who are impatient, that's something to keep in mind as well. Lastly, there is pricing. Now, our U.S. carriers have been playing games with the Nexus 6 pricing. Shame on them. Google sells it direct, unlocked from Google Play Store for $6.49 for the 32 gig and $50 more, $6.99 for the 64 gig model. There's variability also in the Samsung Galaxy. No pricing depending on carrier. Lately, AT&T charges more than other carriers for the full retail pricing. Goodness only knows why. That will affect your monthly pricing plan for those of you who are doing the monthly payment plan kind of thing. But on average, call it $750. So about $100 more. That's what T-Mobile charges, $750. That's around what Sprint is charging. Verizon's the cheapest. They're $700. AT&T is around $825. Shame on you, AT&T. Shame on you. On contract, $249 right now for the Nexus 6. I have a feeling that's going to be dropping because it's $649 full retail. So there's really no reason why it's more than $199 on contract, except for the fact it's hot and hard to get. This guy is typically $299 with a two-year contract. So for those of you who are saying, wow, the Nexus 6 could have had an IR blaster on it or a fingerprint scanner or any of these other doodads, that's what the $100 savings difference represents right there. How many doodads you get on there? Of course, Google likes things clean. They don't usually put on a lot of extra hardware bells and whistles. Gives you an idea, though. There is a difference in price. You guys always ask me, so which one would you buy? What phone are you using? Now, I honestly really change phones every couple of weeks so I can really live with them and use them. So asking me which phone I use is a moving target. But between these two, you know, it's flip a coin depending on, well, here it is. I've been using Samsung Galaxy Note 4 a lot and the Galaxy Note Edge. I really did like the Galaxy Note Edge quite a bit. Before that, I was using the S5 quite a bit. After all, I get kind of tired of TouchWiz, to be honest, and the lag that always seems to creep in and the UI enhancements that I never really use. So then I'm like all about something like the Nexus 6. Clean Android also enjoyed the Moto X 2014 edition. And even the Sony Xperia Z3 and Z3 Compact are cleaner experiences. So for me, it's what I haven't been using for the last six months that I happen to like. So right now, I'm pretty enamored with the Nexus 6. It's clean. It's fast. It gives me a big window on everything that I'm doing. The almost six inches is like, wow, what a treat. You know, if you're going to go big, you're going big. So you get almost a quarter inch more on here. Had I not been spending several months with the Samsung phones, I'd probably be saying, wow, that multi-window stuff is just so cool. How was I living without that? And all that sort of thing. You get the idea here. It really is about what features you like and which features you think you actually will use. And for those of you who are our previous Samsung owners, you do know which features you do and don't use and how important they are to you. I will say one thing, Nexus 6 and Google making a phablet, really the big market for phablets has been Note owners, and Note owners are awful fond of all the features that are in a Note. So I think that people are giving a real critical eye to the Nexus 6 because it doesn't do everything that a Samsung Galaxy Note phone does. That's pretty interesting. So I'll leave it up to you as to which one you prefer in terms of software treatment and how important getting quick OS updates are to you. Obviously, the Nexus wins there versus having lots more software features on the Samsung. So there it is, the Battle of the Titans. We got the Samsung Note 4 here. We have the Nexus 6 here. And it's really going to be what you're looking for in a phablet. Some people want that pure Android experience. Just give me everything and give me it on a bigger screen. Some people want all the bells and whistles, the features, that multitasking, multi-window UI here, the S Pen, those sorts of things. So if you're into features, you definitely want the Note 4. If you're into just pure Android, you just want a really big screen, the Nexus 6 is for you. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website to read the written reviews of each of these products, watch our video reviews, and hit that like button.